The show is Engineer Your Life. I'm Lungel, okay? I'm hashtag Mr. Engineer. Guess what? I have an amazing, amazing guest again. I always bring you the best people in the country, in Africa even, don't, don't you dare. His name is Kai Amtetwa, musician, multi-instrumentalist, entrepreneur. You should see the car he came in, but I won't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> He's just absolutely amazing. He's the first black person, actually, to win South African Idols. Kaya, good afternoon. Thank you so much, sir. Good afternoon to you, too. How are you? I'm fantastic. Thank I, you for having me. I think, the mo I think the most important thing that I didn't say in that description of you is that you're a dad. I'm absolutely right? a dad. To a three-year-old, to a wonderful three-year-old. I, I, I recently saw snaps of his birthday party. That was amazing. We had a good time. Yeah. He ran around like a clown, dude. He had such an amazing yeah. time. He, he's so grown. He's, he's my everything. Absolutely. Amazing. I think overwhelmed. I clown. There's the clown there. Watch. Things must happen. Yeah. Watch, boy. <laughs> Yeah, no, we had such a it was great time of our yeah. families coming together, celebrating his life. Um, for me, it wasn't a big deal that much because his birthday was on Tuesday okay. and I spent the whole day with him. Okay. So when you guys saw the stuff on social media on the Sunday, it was really just like a celebratory thing for, for people. But the most special part for me was just me and him. I picked him up from school, went to choose toys mm -hmm. and hang out in the apartment. So it was, that was really special for me. So Kaya or Kailise? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Kusnati. Don't call out my ID while you're <laughs> at. <laughs> um, if, if you weren't into music, but if music wasn't what made everybody know you about, sure. what would Kailise be doing? We wouldn't have a Kaya Mse, so we definitely sure. have a Kailise who's Possibly. into something else doing other things. I think I'd, I'd still be in, I, I love working with people. Mm -hmm. Somehow I'd like, I like community stuff. I like developing people. I like to unearth. I'm, I always say that if I could unfamous myself, I would be very happy. I'm happy living a private life. Yeah. Um, but also being effective, you mm -hmm. know, helping people, changing people's lives, you know, unearthing people's potential. I love doing that. So whatever fashion or form that would have taken outside of the music business, I would have, that's exactly what I've been known for. But I think what you've done well since you're saying if you wish you could unfamous yourself, right? Idols made you to a certain level of fame. Sure. But you've been able to direct it towards significance rather sure. than fame. Sure. Because fame requires you to post twice a week on Instagram, to post a story every day. But okay, I say, I'm going to three months and post that. I'm going to eight in Jingamai. Oh, love that. I wish I could. <laughs> right? So that, that is significant. Yeah. You, you still have platforms, you still mm. have working, you still, sure. you're still working, you still appear on important, relevant things, sure. regardless of you pushing relevance in our faces. Absolutely. So I think that speaks to why also you're a senior pastor at Oasis. Sure. Yeah, look, I think that I've evolved. I mean, I've made, my, I've made a promise to myself that when I turn 35, I'm going to get off social media. So last year I turned 35 and I got off social media. Um, Jeez. And that's, that's been a big twist for my life and for my business. Mm -hmm. um, and really just to find myself again for the next 20 years of my life for what I believe God is going to do for the next couple of years. So, um, and so there's nothing wrong with social media. It's just a personal thing for me. Would you say God doesn't need Kai on social media then? I'd say Kaya doesn't need Kaya on social media. I, get that. I wouldn't spiritualize it that much. Yeah. It's a personal journey thing, a personal development journey for me. And so that, I mean, the last eight months, I've focused so much on being a father. I've, my mm -hmm. business has grown in the last eight months. Mm -hmm. I should have done this earlier. <laughs> my business has grown <laughs> in the last eight months. Cut. You know what I mean? My <laughs> business has grown in the last eight months more than it did in the last two years. Mm. Um, and that's just a time wasting that it was for me. Okay, and yes. I, there are people that make money off social media. And I'm Instant like, money, go, invoicing all the time. Yeah. I don't. Yeah, you I know what I mean? that. And I have to be honest with myself. If it doesn't affect my top line, why am I involved in it? When you won the singing competition, sure. it was 2012, right? If I'm correct. Absolutely. So we're about to hit a decade from now. Mm. There are many people who have since won after you. What do you think happens between either winning or going onto the competition and how some people's careers never take off. What's the reason for that? I think it's, it's a lot of factors. Let me be honest, you know. Um, there's a lot of factors that go into mm -hmm. that. And we could go on and on and on speculating on those factors. But for me, I, I'd say that uh, a, lot, a huge chunk of failure generally mm -hmm. is not so much, um, it's not so much, 
it's not so much that the person uh, you know didn't follow through or didn't do what they are supposed to do no mm -hmm. um, sometimes things just don't come together in life I know I know a lot of people where we might say that that was their break but their defining point happens five years later after, after what we call the break you know I what I mean? you. so nothing is always as what it seems mm -hmm. you know what I mean and we must respect that um, in people's lives so for me I think what I I went into the competition saying win or lose I'm going to be a musician okay I never the competition was a bonus yeah not the thing yes you know what I mean so I wrote music during idols i wrote my entire album that i released first Uprising. i wrote all those songs no um the first album the, okay, the, the, the r&b yeah. album okay. i wrote okay. that r&b album in the idols house during the idols show because i'd made up my mind because i didn't know when i'm going to leave so by the time I, if i leave the following weekend i also have a product that i can be ready to I release so i went in strong knowing that mm -hmm. win or lose i'm coming out as a musician out of this your super bass performance, do you think that was the defining moment for the competition? <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I think it was. Um, again... Now how are you singing Nicki Minaj? Uh, well, look, <laughs> stranger things have happened. <laughs> Here we are. I mean, I, yeah. I, I think that moment for me was the, one of the most scariest moments of my musical life. Mm -hmm. um, having... Because I didn't have a reference for what I was doing. Mm -hmm. I, I, and I honestly thought that people would hate that thing. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, look at this pastor boy now. He can't even rap. Oh, come on. How oh, boring. He wants to R&B this. So I, I came in from a negative perspective. Yeah. But the energy in the room just mm -hmm. shifted. And, and also, because I'm a God person, that was, that was my time and chance. Yeah, and the yeah. window opened for me. And I... You went through. I went through. Yeah. Instead of just being passive and mediocre in the, in the, in the season. I always tell some of my friends that are going, there's a, there's a young lady that's entering idols that I know very, very personal, who's worked very, very personal with me. Mm -hmm. And I told her, she said, should I go? Should I go? I'm like, don't go because you're asking me. And because you haven't made up yeah, your mind. Yeah, mind. yeah. Make up your mind. Yeah. Are you the season 18 winner or are you not? Right. And if you've made up your mind in that context, then I'm ready to support you. So I'll mention three names or three titles, right? And then after mention of these names or titles, you must give me 15 to 30 seconds of what comes to mind. First one, Dogo Zumbambo. The most prolific worship singer that we have on the continent. I get that. I get that. Hands down. Yeah. Longevity, right? <laughs> Never mind. Depth. Depth. You know, Quality. understanding. Of understanding. Understanding how to steward the presence. You know, it's one thing being a singer. It's another people... It's another thing transforming people's lives through a song. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. I've, there are songs that Dogos has sung that have been defining moments for my life. Mm -hmm. um, and they are a monument for me that whenever I hear it, like one of the songs is When I Remember What the Lord Has Done. Mm -hmm. That song makes me cry every... I avoid it. <laughs> yeah, it you know, and it doesn't make me cry from an emotional context, but mm -hmm. because it reminds me of a certain moment where that song took me out of. Yeah, and I can always point to it in Bongo Um... Oh, in course, see? <sighs> 30 but, seconds, remember. <laughs> Kaya, just, just be an example. Hectic. Try and be an example. Hectic, because you have to remove yourself from yourself in that sense. Yeah. And, and say, if he were to emulate me in 20 years' time, would it be a good emulation? Nothing scares me more than that. Right. Because my son is not going to do what I tell him to do. He's mm -hmm. only going to do what I'm doing. What he sees. That's it. You doing. Exactly. Say. Oh, that's my girl, man. Um, look, when it comes to talent, yeah. and again, the, this is subjective to whoever is listening, uh -huh. but for me, um, she is one of my favorite worship singers. Um, from a personal favorite ever, ever, I, I, ever. I think everybody who's behind the scenes here will is tired Oof. of me and say, I but love yes. her. Um, I, I, and I, songwriter I, of note, of note, yeah, of note. Yeah. I mean, she's her recent win with Motown is just listen. That was a long time. I knew about that deal for like over a year now, yeah, that yeah, it was yeah. cooking and. T and to see it unfold the way that it uh, that it's done, she Crazy. deserves every single moment. She of definitely deserves it. When you look at when you look at the fact that. I kept on saying, um, end of 2020, Claire has given us the best album across genres. Sure. And to, for her to do that in a time where she couldn't use it to gig, she couldn't use it to maximize her profits, sure. should I say. Sure. And then for it to manifest in this deal was just... For it, this was her window. Her window was open yeah. again and her door. And yeah. we, um, I'm only grateful that I get to share 
this beautiful story with mm. her because it's just the beginning. You've, you've been friends forever because she, she was in Oasis, right? Yeah. Uh, when she was still in Durban. Sure. So it's just, I can imagine what it feels for you. Yeah, so when I left for, for, for the competition, she, she came in to direct Tourist. music at church. Oh, church, yeah? Yeah, she directed, she became musical director at church mm -hmm. for about eight years. So she Whoa. filled in my space. Wow. And every time I'd come back home and, and I'd be like, this girl is... And mm. that was really long. Right. And to see her become more into contemporary contemporary worship yes. singer has has it's blown my head. So as you know, you can't separate me from technology. I speak about technology on radio, in my content creation, everything I do. Um, one of my favorite segments is Tech Corner, and now I'm gonna go to my special box and gonna give Kaya something, and he must tell me what it reminds him of. Kaya, I have this special box. Okay. Right. In my special box, there is a technical item as this is tick corner and i want to show you something and you're going to tell me what it means to you you're a very stylish person you like your technology <laughs> you like your fast things cars <laughs> <laughs> so let me get my box sure let me get my box um and i think this i think you use this a lot because you're you're always in an aeroplane going somewhere you know exactly oh absolutely oh dude i live on that oh <laughs> that's my life right oh my goodness <laughs> How, how else do you survive without this? No, I can't. Days? I absolutely cannot. Do you know that AirPods for me have become my life? Right. And you're right. For yeah. me, when I'm on the aircraft, I'm listening to podcasts. Mm -hmm. um, I'm listening to sermons. Mm -hmm. I'm listening to audiobooks. So that's where that's my one of my learning tools. You know, without it, I basically can't learn. It, it really is because you're able to immerse into your own world when you are with people, or able to avoid people. <laughs> you know what's tricky Sometimes about that? Sometimes they're off. <laughs> do, you know that's weird? do you know what's tricky for me? Yeah. So you know that it's got this noise cancellation thing. Yes. So I know that when I'm going to a public place, I switch off noise cancellation. Okay. Because I know I'm going to be in the I can't be in the position where I'm going to be in the position. Okay. So I'm so careful. You actually said something that I'm extremely, extremely yeah, careful yeah. about. So we're nearing the end of our show. Our show. Sure. We're about to get there at the end very sad because I mean I'm with Kaya <laughs> <laughs> Um Kaya so um, it's called the final truth okay. I'm gonna ask something and I need I need a, an honest answer right um, in the backdrop of your music career is the celebrity element of being Kaya right? and that comes with a lot of public scrutiny that is sometimes very overwhelming right mm. um, 2019 your, 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 your personal intimate life was under a lot of scrutiny from the public, from the media, and a lot was being said about you. What was your source of strength and how much of it was actually true to the extent that it affected you? Um, look, I've been, in, I've been in the media space for over 12 years now mm -hmm. and I've, I've learned I've learned very, very important lessons that what is private must be private. Mm -hmm. And if it happens to come into the public um, domain, um, you know, it's important for us to always maintain a sense of privacy mm -hmm. in Pilozet. It's, it's, it's healthy, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? So there are aspects of my life um, that I will never reveal um, that are between myself, my family, um, and my God, yeah. do you know what I mean? And then I think that's sacred. It creates, it creates some sort of sacredness to life and uh, and i can i can get to be sane you know and live a life that's that's normal mm -hmm. but to answer really your question directly my source of strength was really my family mm -hmm. um you know uh, i i've i've drawn so much strength from my parents and especially my father mm -hmm. my father is a very quiet man but once he opens up once he opens up kulumanawe because he doesn't speak often, you lean in and you listen to hear with the Ufunuk team because yes. he doesn't open up his mouth mm -hmm. naturally. So there are things that he said during that period in my life that were therapy to me. Um, and they stick out more than the actual therapy sessions I've had to attend mm -hmm. to live through that moment. I get you know? you. Um, so my source of strength has been family. Um, and the, the interesting thing about what you're saying that when I, when I went through my divorce, in that beginning of the year, we went into lockdown. Yeah. So I was in my house for alone. eight months alone. Mm. Um, so I, I went through all the motions to deal. You had um, to face them directly. I had to face them di yeah. directly. I couldn't hide on traveling. I couldn't be gigging. I couldn't be busy. 
I had nothing else to do but to stare myself in the mirror and fix the man that I could that that I was not happy about, and so that that was a big chunk uh, of my life in that period, and I I had to learn to center myself and begin to draw strength from Ungulungul and draw strength from my family. Speak well, just on the backdrop of your divorce, it means you and Undando are co-parenting now. Mm. Um, something I read from Michelle Obama's memoir, she said that. Um, parenting is a verb. Being a father is a verb. It's yeah. not about just sending money. It's not about, um, yeah, you could, you're a kaya. You can afford to just send money sure. and say, Dando, do it, do it. Sure. Dando, wherever you are, in, wherever in the country you are, mm. I spend a lot of time in KZN and you're doing your own thing. Sure. Um, you and Dando are co-parenting, man. The things we are seeing, you, you guys are doing it really well. How's that journey been for you? We made up our minds a long time ago that we're, we're, we're going to be parents. Mm. We're going to be parents. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to be a parent alone. She's not going to be a parent alone in her own silo. We are going to be parents and raise our son in the best way that we possibly can. So that has been amazing. It's been an amazing experience for the both of us then so that we, we, we can have this young man mm -hmm. that we can be proud of, that we can look to and, and, just, and just give ourselves to him for the little period that we have to influence him and and be something that's a positive uh, a positive injection in his life so that one day when he looks at his parents um he can point to us to say that no these people were selfless when it comes to me we put aside our our individual problems and we focused on the one thing that was the main thing definitely to close off this what you're giving me is the sincerity and honesty of a man who's worked on his healing I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, Nyambose, thank you for coming to my show. Um, Engineer Your Life is a baby that we, sure. we are growing. Uh, we are seeing great things with it. We will definitely see great things with it. Absolutely. Um, thank you for honoring my invite. You're an incredible person. I learned so much from you. Um, as I said in the previous segment, you are very honest, you are very sincere, sure. which shows a level of maturity. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we learn. Um, sure. And I'm sure everybody that's watching is going to learn sure. from that. So. To more success, you're a businessman now. I think that's your yeah, primary focus. Absolutely. So, for me, like Lendo, we're hey, everywhere. Yeah, no, no. Can't tell. Thank you, Thank you. Yeah, man, it's been it's been really amazing. Thank you, sir. I really appreciate the time. Thank you for you know for your engaging conversation. You know, and I appreciate. I wish you um, and the show everything of the best. We'll Thank certainly you. support it, and Thank you. you know, when you have our backing, definitely. Cheers, man. Cheers, Cheers to you too, sir. Cheers.